Good evening. Can you see me? Huh? Okay, you hear me. All right. Good evening, everyone. This is Pastor David Hughley. I'm doing a Bible study this evening for Bethlehem Temple of Praise. Um, give me a minute. I want to see how I can uh, see the comments as they come in. Let's see. Tyra, if you put a comment in, I want to see if I can see the comments. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Khan put it in. There we go. Thank you. All right. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. As you come in, as you make your way in for a Bible study um, for Bethlehem Temple of Praise this evening, I'm standing in for um, Pastor Kamala Richardson. I want to say good evening to B Top, Saints of God, and family and friends. And all those who are on Facebook uh, this evening or those who may be watching later on on YouTube at your convenience. Uh, my name is Pastor David Hughley. I'm assistant pastor at, at, at BTOP, uh, Bethlehem Temple of Praise. And, and, um, and I'm just enjoying this opportunity just to come before you this evening as uh, Pastor Com makes her way uh, to celebrate in the travels for a birthday, which is a uh, happy birthday or happy early birthday, Pastor Com. Uh, June 19th, I believe it's her birthday. If it's not, she really will correct me, but I, I, I think it, I know it's uh, June 19th. Um, to Pastor Jeff and Pastor Com, God bless you. I always let people know that's, that's a dynamic duel there and uh and i really enjoy serving and i love serving with them and serving the people of god um, um i hope and pray that pastor calm celebrates her birthday with some rest and some enjoyment uh, as she celebrate with family and friends uh, i i like to welcome each and every one of you as you join this facebook live uh broadcast feed this evening um, I'm, I'm actually going to continue in the theme in the series of prayer that Pastor Com has been uh, teaching on, uh, it's been a really good, really good message, and uh, uh, and something I need you to do this evening. I need you to uh, write each one of these scriptures down um, because these are life changing and life altering scriptures that uh, that I'm about to go through. Uh, you know how I know these scriptures changed my life forever and, and for the better. So um, uh, let us pray before we go into uh, the word. Um, Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus as we just lift up the name of Jesus. As we just magnify and glorify your holy name, Father God. I thank you for each and every person who's signing in this evening, Father God, on this Facebook live feed, Father God, that you bless them exceedingly abundantly with all the key and acts of thank, Father God. I pray for traveling mercies for uh, Pastor Khan right now, Father God. I, I, I thank you, Father God, for uh, angel protection being kept about the around her right here right now father god i i thank you for each and every person who, who's who's on this on this feed tonight father god that you bless them that you touch them that you do exceedingly abundantly but all the kingdom acts of thank father god that you meet every need according to your riches and glory by christ jesus father god and i, I pray for friends and family and loved ones right now father god even those who have lost loved ones recently father god even as i lift up the wells family and the hughes family and the smith family father god as i pray for those who who are fighting and struggling with the virus, Father God, or whatever the situation or circumstance may be, Father God, that you move on their behalf, Father God, that you meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Father God. And Lord, do exceedingly abundantly but all we can ask and thank, Father God. Bless sit free, heal, and deliver on tonight. And Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. You are our redeemer, Father God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, as I can, as I said, I'm going to continue in, in, on, on prayer, the prayer series. And, um, and let's go, let's go to, um, to the book of Matthew. Uh, chapter 7, uh, verses 7 and 8. Uh, these are two very familiar scriptures in the Bible that, that people quote on a regular basis. Um, let me read these. Uh, let me put these two uh, reading of these two uh, verses into your ear. It says in uh, verse 7, it says, X and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. 
Verse 8, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, come on now, it shall be open. Um, as a text entitled for tonight, for tonight's Bible study, prayer, the key to opening your door. Faith, focus, and follow through. Let me repeat that again. Uh, tonight's uh, text entitled for tonight, for tonight's Bible study is prayer, the key to opening your door. Faith, focus, and follow through. Um I need everyone to take take some notes tonight. You use your tablet, uh, use your phone, use your photographic memory, or, or do it the old-fashioned way. Use a paper and pen, but uh, write, write these scriptures down. Uh, keep them close to your heart and, and meditate and, and 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 take some devotion on these, because um, prayer is truly the answer. Prayer is is it, it, the prayer is the key to opening your door. But you, in order to do that, you got to do it with faith. You got to do it with focus and you got to do it with follow through. First of all, you know what? In, in order to properly pray and to pray effectively, we must read and study God's word so that we know how to pray. It, it, it says, our father, which I in heaven, he said, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts if we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to t- temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. That, that's the model prayer on how to pray. The first thing we need to do is call upon his holy name, his hollow name. He said, hallowed be thy name. That's the first thing we got to do is recognize God for who he is, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the Great I Am. That's the first thing we got to do. And, and the next thing, I, I have a challenge for each and every one of us. We got to get into the Word of God every day. That's really how you know how to pray, because what you want to pray, you want to pray the Word. You want to pray what God would have you to pray. And only the only way to do that, you got to get into the Word of God. Uh, you, you know what? Because of our, our, our busy, the busyness of our life, it's not it's not it's not easy to read the word of God because a lot of times we, we get so distracted in our everyday living in our everyday lives and the things that we do. But you know what? God has made it so easy for us today with modern technology. Think about it. We can use our phones. We can use our tablets. We can use our watches. We can use our computers just to notify us and even send us a scripture, a, day, a daily word to read. A daily word to meditate on, a daily word to ponder over. That's all we got to do. And God has made it so easy for us now. And you know what? The thing about prayer, prayer should be personal between you and God. That's the thing about prayer. You got to make it personal. Okay, can I break this thing down? You got to make it personal. Each of us should have our own personal way of communicating with God because that, that's what prayer is. Prayer ain't nothing more than communicating with God, however you communicate. Because we all communicate differently, but how you talk and, and the way that you, you talk to God, the way you talk to people, that's the same way you should talk to God. Because you just communicate with God. When, when, and when you have a personal relationship with him, it's easy to communicate with him. It's easy to talk to God. You know what? And when you, when you communicate to God, you got to communicate with God by talking directly to him. I say, Lord, hey, I need your help today. Lord, I need you to move on my behalf today. Lord, I need this. I need you to I need you to move on my behalf. There's somebody in need, Father God. You you riding down the street, you see someone in the car and say, then, Lord, please save them, Father God. Please heal them, Father God. That person got I got a child at home. They they, they got a job they gotta go to. We 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 got to pray and talk directly to him. When we when, you know what? We got to talk to God. And but when you pray, you know what? You 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 can pray silently, or you can pray out loud. You can pray formally, or you can pray informally in a formal fashion. But it's your personal choice. But take time out and pray to God. You know, if you you one that was like, Lord, uh, I need you. I got to have you, Father God. Move on my behalf right now in the name of Jesus. Or you could just say, Lord. Help me. I need some help. How, however you want to come, just come to him. 
You know, you know what? But uh, there's a scripture. Write this scripture down. Philippians 4 and 6. It says, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer. Come on now. And supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. That's what Philippians 4 and 6 says. It says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be careful for nothing means don't worry. We should never worry. For every worry that we have, we should turn into prayer. Amen. I say for every worry that we have, we should turn it into prayer. We think about it. We we all we all have worries on our jobs with our children, with with, with, with the young ones, especially the older ones, in in our homes, in our school. You name it. There's worry, but you know what? The Bible tells us to turn our worries into prayers. That's what that scripture's talking about. Do you want to worry less? Well, then pray more. Whenever you start to worry, stop and pray. Because think about it. When I talked about faith, focus, and follow through. If you're really walking in faith, you can't walk in doubt. Because that's what worry is. Worry is doubt. So if you if you see that worry start coming in, that's that doubt trying to get into you. So turn that doubt into faith by praying. That's all we have to do. Turn doubt into faith by praying. Stop stop worrying and start praying. That's faith. Hebrews 11 1 say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, see, when, when, when you, you when you pray about something, you you, you, you don't see it. Ain't, it ain't happened yet. But you got to believe that it will happen and it's going to happen. Whatever I pray. I always say right here and right now, I need God to move. He might not come right here, right now, but I know if I say right here, right now, eventually right here, right now, go get here for me. Amen. Pray, pray about it. Pray about it. Is something going on with your husband? Pray about it. Is something going on with your wife? Pray about it. Is something going on with your son, your daughter, a family member, a boss, a coworker? Or a neighbor and still worrying about that situation. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Glory to God. <laughs> Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Glory to God. You know what? My, my, my wife and I learned a long time ago about praying instead of worrying. About things, Amen. I I, I remember um, when my wife was pregnant uh, with our oldest son, Alan, who's thirty three years old now. Um, we we were staying with my mother, and 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 I was looking for a job, and uh, and her dad, who, who's now a pastor, and and my mom was hitting my wife from both sides with questions and with doubts, you know, trying to turn it into worry. You know, I, I, I was looking for a job. She was pregnant, eight and a half months pregnant. And uh, and she would talk to her dad. She'd say, he got a job yet? No, but he go get one. <laughs> my mother would tell my wife, you know what? If he if he ain't got a job by the time he had that baby, you know, you can do like we used to do back in the day. You can open that drawer, put a blanket in there, and use that as a crib. My mother, my wife said, "No, that ain't happening. <laughs> she said, that ain't happening." And she talked to dad again. You got a job yet? No, but he gonna get one. She know it because she seen me hitting the pavement every day. I was going down into the Jewish vocational center. I was, I was going down there and uh, and, and, and filling out resumes and learning how to resume write and uh, and filling out applications. I, I and I, I was hitting the beat. I, I knew I had to get something. She was ain't have nine months pregnant. Something had to happen. Something had to give. Look what did he got a job yet? No, but he gonna get one. You know when you gonna pull that draw and put that blanket in? No, Miss Hughley, something gonna happen. Something gonna break. And sure enough, two weeks before uh, Alan came here, I got a job. You know, you had to work that week in the hole, and I got paid every week. So 
And when when Tari had the baby, she had to, it was like three weeks later because she had to stay uh, in the hospital a little longer for some complications. So I had two checks in my pocket. So my, my brother Michael, me and him went shopping. And this is before Tyree got home with the baby. We went and got the crib. We got the baby bed. We got the stroller, the car seat, the blankets, the baby bottle, the diapers. We got everything needed. I spent both of my checks and half of my brother check. <laughs> and he had more than enough. So we, we knew if, if we just prayed about it. And we, I didn't even, we didn't know God like we know God today. But we knew. We knew something was going to break and something was going to happen. Thank God for that. You know what? Let, let, let's t take a moment and reflect on your prayer life because prayer is so important. How often do you pray? First Thessalonians 5 and 17 tells us to pray without ceasing. Uh, when I first read that scripture, how, how do you go pray without ceasing? I know now because every time you look around, there's something to pray about. Two. Look at your prayer life. What kinds of things do you pray about? James 5 and 16. Write that down. James 5 and 16 says, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. That's how we ought to pray. Three, when, when do you pray? Men ought to always pray, it says, and not faint. That, that what Luke 18 and 1 said, men ought to always pray and not faint. The, 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 the woman troubled the unjust judge until he granted her request. Ain't that something? Let, 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 let me read the scripture in your hand. That's Luke 18, 1 through 5. And, and, and it reads, he said, then he spoke a parable to them that men Always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying there was a certain, come on now, certain, a certain city, city of judge who did not fear God, no regard man. This, this judge, he, he ain't fear God and he ain't regard man. Now, now there was a widow in the city, come on now, and she came to him saying, get justice for me, for my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards, he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I would avenge her. Least she, her continual coming to worry me. So that woman kept worrying and worrying and worrying the unjust judge to the point that he moved on her behalf. Think about it. If we just be persistent in our prayer to God, if we just keep going to the throne of grace. God's going to hear us, and he's going to move on our behalf. But you know what? With prayer, you know, it ain't nothing complicated about it. Prayer should be something normal that we do. Prayer should be something sincere that we do. Prayer should be a genuine conversation between me and God, between you and God. That, that's all prayer is. Pray and talk to God how you normally talk, how you normally communicate. He, he is the one who can go and do for us like no one else. He, he's the one. He, he knows everything about us already. He's the one. He'll listen to whatever we have to say, and he won't judge us. He already knows our situation. He already knows our circumstances. He already knows our problems, our fears, and our life. Glory to God. He's just looking for us to come to him. That's what God looking for. All he's looking for us to come to him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Amen. I always tell people, to one extent or another, we're all intercessors. We're each and every one of us. So it's because it's something like because we, we, we all plead the cases for other people. All the time for family, for friends, for co-workers. I know I'm praying for, 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 for co-workers all the time. I'm going to the throne of grace for, for my family, for my neighborhood, for my city, for my church. That's what an intercessor is. If you're praying for other people, you're an intercessor. A person who regularly and on a daily basis pleads a case for others before God, that's an intercessor. It, it's, it's really not about me, my foreign no more. That ain't what it's about. We live in a great big world, but it's so small. 
I know that's an oxymoron, but but it's so true. You 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 see how fast that that virus spread across the entire planet Earth. Woo. I mean, it came in no time. They was talking about how it was in China. It was it November, December, then it creeped in nice by January and February, March, and the whole world locked down. That's just how small the world is. But you know, we have to learn to interface with people. We have to learn to pray for one another. I interface with people all over the world all the time. And you know what? Basically, what we are, we are spiritual defense attorneys. We all pray for for our situation and, our, and ourselves, but true prayer, come on, let me break this down. True prayer is praying for others because the scriptures teach us to pray one for another so that you may receive your healing. Let me say that again. We, we, we are basically spiritual defense attorneys. We all pray for our situations and circumstances. We all pray for, for pray for ourselves, but true prayer is when we pray for others. Because that's what the Bible says. It says, pray you one for another that you may receive your healing. So if you're praying for yourself all the time, you're really not praying for yourself, according to scripture. <laughs> Did you hear me? If you're praying, if we're praying for ourselves all the time, we're really not praying for ourselves, according to scripture. Because that's what the scripture said. Let, 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 me, let me break it down. James 5 and 16 says, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man of Velmont. Prayer, the key to opening the door. It, it takes faith, focus, and follow through. Let me, we got to be praying for other people. Um, let, let me put this in your ear for reading. James 5, 13 to 16, 5, no, 13 to 18. Let me read that, 5 to 13 to 18. He said, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anoint him with all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and pray and, and the prayer and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall forgive him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of the righteous of valid blood. So we should be praying for one another. I tell you, that's what we do at B Top. I tell you, if you need a prayer, we got some prayer warriors. We got some intercessors. I mean, the Faulkner, Sister Gibson. Now, come on now. Pastor Jeff, Pastor Cobb, Sister Huey. We got Pastor Harris already all the way in Texas praying for other people. Sister Underwood, come on. Doreen, she, she, she'll, she'll pray the drop of a dime. Uh, Pastor Hugh, I, I'm praying all the time. I pray every day. We have, a, we have a prayer focus that we do every day with my family. 7 to 7 30 every day. Every Tuesday, we got Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening prayer. And I ain't praying for myself. I'm praying for other Elder Michelle, Elder Lori, Sister Sharon, Sister, Sister Councilman. I'm telling you, the Chaplain Will Simmons, we're praying. We're praying. We got to pray. He said, pray ye one for another that you may receive your healing. That's how you do it. Saints, the most powerful resource is communion with God through prayer. Do you hear me? The results often are greater than what we even think are possible. Because he said all things are possible though, to them that believe. We just got to believe. So people, some people see prayer as the last resort. And then they try everything else. Then they go to prayer. You know what? Prayer should be the first resort. Since God's power is infinitely greater than our own, it only makes sense that we allow it, especially because it, it encourages us to do so. Like I said, Matthew 7 and 8 says, Action it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone who acts receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. You know what? We got to be persistent in our prayer. 
We got to, we got to use our faith. He said, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We got to keep on hearing that word. We got to keep on. He said, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to keep getting that word in you. And when you get that word in you, you, you know the prayer about situation. You know the prayer about circumstances. Proverbs 4 and 7 said, in all your getting, get an understanding. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, act, get wisdom, and with all that getting, get an understanding. That's what the Bible says. I'm reading my Bible right here. But you know what? Husband and wife, let me bring that in here. We got to be in agreement. He said, with agreement in the home, a husband and wife must be free from strife with no bitterness between them. You got to be in agreement. If, if, you, if you're not in agreement, your prayers will be hindered. Your prayers will be hindered. We as husband and wife, we got to be on the same page. Is the husband telling everything what to do and how to do it, when to do it? You ain't in agreement. You got your own thing going on. That's why things ain't working the way they should be working. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> anyway, let me get back on the subject. Even though oh, that's prayer too. <laughs> that, that that's first Peter three and seven. He says, Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to the knowledge given honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vassal, and as being heirs together. Your heirs together. Yeah. And the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Faith, focus, and follow through. Prayer the key to opening that door. Come on now. We, we, we should be praying about things that are affecting us. And that necessary as your home. I'm talking about we should be praying things that affect this country. Things that affect your state, wherever you at. Things that affect your city, wherever you live, live at. Things that affect your community. He said, I exalt there, first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, giving thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. We got to pray. This situation concerning this pandemic. Thank God that the numbers are starting to come down. But now they got variants out here. You got some people say, I, I think it's a conspiracy. So I ain't getting the vaccine. Baby, I suggest you get it. Don't, uh, don't play with fire. Pray about it. Hey, it, 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 it'll help all of us. We got to lift up the young generation. You know, when you're young, you, 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 you feel invincible. We got to pray for our young generation. You, you got everybody self-talk now. A lot of people ain't going to church like they used to go to church. I don't need to go to church because this happened. And that preacher did this. That preacher did that. You you go to church for God and yourself to have a personal relationship with God. That's a church out there for you. Just find it. A Bible study church, a word church. Come on, find that church that's for you. There's all kind of things that we need to be praying about. Things occurring in our schools and in, in, in our homes and our neighborhoods and in our churches. We got to pray. The word of God teaches us to pray repeatedly and persistently. He said, ask. That's what he said. But you got to keep on asking. Ask for that promotion, for that raise, for that healing, for your wife, your husband, that friend, that cousin. He said, he himself took my infirmities and bore my sickness and by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. That healing might not come today, but it's coming. It's coming. Pray for that maturity for that child. It's coming. And he said, it will be given unto you. Seek. You got to keep on seeking, not just one time. You got to keep on seeking. Think about it. He said, faith come by him and hearing by the word of God. Think about it. When even if, if, I, I had a dog named Thunder. When I didn't see that dog, I said, Thunder, Thunder. He, he don't hear me initially, but he, he hear my voice. If I keep calling, he, he'll eventually hear me. And then eventually he'll show up. It's the same way. We got to keep knocking on the door. We got to keep asking. We got to keep seeking. If you knock, that door will be open to you. The doors just don't open. Think about it. You, you got to have a key to that door. You got to have the right key for it to open. I had doors at my house, and baby, if you ain't got the right key, it ain't opening. 
it ain't opening. You can you put all the keys you want to put in, but if they ain't got the right key in there, it ain't opening, especially with them dead posts on there. <laughs> they ain't opening. For everyone who asks, they receive. He said, he who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, the door going to be open. That's Matthew 7, 7 and 7, 8. Jesus tells us to be persistent in pursuing God. People often give up after a few half-hearted efforts and conclude that God can't be found. But knowing God takes faith. Knowing God takes focus. Knowing God takes follow-through. Just, just, just like when, when people court, they're persistent. When I was courting my wife, I was real persistent. I was washing her car, uh, going to the laundry man, I, 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 I was doing whatever I needed to do. I was persistent in my courting. All I could keep, all I kept going through in my mind was look at here, look at here, look at here. <laughs> that's right. I was persistent. And that's the thing about it. We got to be persistent. Just like I was in the natural with that courting. The same way with prayer, you got to be persistent in your prayer. You got to be consistent in your prayer. You got to be focused in your prayer. You got to believe when you pray, it's going to come to pass. And I ain't praying for myself. I ain't praying. I ain't, I, I, don't, I don't pray that much for myself anymore. I pray, God, God see my heart. God, God knows my heart. So as I pray for others, as I seek his face, a change has come. Jesus assures us that our efforts will be rewarded. Don't give up in your efforts to seek God. Seek him day. Seek him night. Continue to ask him for more knowledge, for patience, for wisdom, love, and understanding. He'll give them all to you. That's the kind of God we serve. All you got to do is just keep seeking after God. I'm about to close here. I don't want, I don't want to be too long here. Um, let me close with this. What God word tells us about prayer. We, we, he said, pray earnestly. Pray earnestly. He said in, in Luke 22 and 44, it says, and being in agony, he, Jesus, come on now, pray earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. My God, that's, that's, that's earnest prayer. We have to always pray. Ephesians 6 and 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in, in the spirit being watchful to this end in all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We, we have to pray for all the saints. We'd be praying for one another. He say, pray ye one for another that you may receive your healing. We, we got to pray for one another, saints of God. That's so important that we pray for one another. Matthew 20, 26 and 44 says, Jesus left them, his disciples, and went away once more and prayed the third time. This is Jesus praying the third time. He prayed the second, the first time, the second time, the third time, saying the same thing. Jesus was not the only person in Scripture who prayed the same thing three times. The Apostle Paul did the same thing. He prayed the same thing three times. Concerning this thing, I plead with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. They're talking about vain repetitions, but we're talking about breakthrough. We talking about you want to get a breakthrough. And sometimes you got to pray about a thing. You got to knock on the door. You got to keep asking. You got to keep seeking. You got to study the word. He said, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to study the word. You got to pray the word. Anything less than persistent prayer is lifeless prayer. You hear me? I say anything less than persistent prayer is lifeless prayer. We got to be consistent in our prayer life. We, 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 we got to be consistent in our prayer life. We got to pray one day and not pray the next day. You, you got to get up praying. You got to go to bed praying. You got to pray during the day. Any opportunity you get, pray. It, it, we got to be persistent in our prayer. Persistent in prayer sits the stage for God's response. And I'm, I, I'm through. I'm through. I'm closing right now. There's three reasons. That we need to be persistent in our prayer because it, it, it's through that faith 
It's through that focus and that follow through that God works on our behalf. Persistent in prayer is just to stay. See, God often postpones his answer in order to prepare us for that situation from which we're praying about to receive his response. Because you know the response ain't always yes. Sometimes the response is no. Sometimes the response is wait. Some, sometimes the response ain't coming to much later. So when we pray and we pray consistently, we God, God, God is often, he's postponing his answer in order to prepare us. As he molds us, as he shapes us, as he prepares us for the answer that's coming. Two, persistence in prayer gives God time to make adjustment. Yeah. Persistent prayer by maybe maybe necessary because God is reshaping us. Sometimes God delay, delays giving us his answer while he makes adjustments in our lives. That's right. Sometimes we, we, he got to make some adjustments in our lives. You're waiting on the Lord is sometimes necessary because the Lord is waiting on you. Sometimes God is waiting for us to make a, a certain move, to go a certain way. Until we go that way, ain't nothing going to happen. You know what? You got to seek after God. You got to seek his faith to know what that next move is and how you should move. He's testing our faith. Your sincerity, your desire to follow him. And three, persistent prayer removes any demonic resistance. <laughs> Sometimes demonic resistance requires preserving prayer. We, 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 and that's called spiritual warfare. Sometimes you got to get some spiritual warfare, and that's a whole other lesson in prayer. But you know what? Prayer is so important. It's so important that we're persistent in our prayer life and we're consistent in our prayer life. Prayer, the key to opening the door, faith, focus, and follow through. God bless you. I thank each and every one of you for joining the broadcast this evening as I, as I stay instead for our pastor Carm. Um, I hope she has a wonderful, wonderful birthday, uh, and we pray for traveling mercies for her. We thank and praise God for Pastor Jeff. Uh, amen. Uh, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you that who tuned in tonight. I thank and praise God for you for taking time out of your busy evening uh, to hear this word tonight. I hope you got something out of that concerning prayer, because prayer is the key to opening the door. Faith, focus and follow through. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. This is Pastor David Hughley signing out. Bless you.